Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. Delighted to have your company and the main talking points on tonight's programme. The countdown to the Scottish Cup semi-finals continues. All the players dreaming of that Hamden final. Miksu Patalainen says he's planning to be Dundee United manager next year. And well done to Hearts. They'll be playing in European football after a 0-0 against Inverness, Caledonian Thistle. That's just a few of the talking points. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter. Martin. I'm delighted to say our boot room guest is St Mirren manager Alec Ray and we also have a fan of Celtic, Phil McQuillan, who's in here tonight to talk about that forthcoming Old Firm fixture on Sunday. So uh, tomorrow night we'll have a Rangers fan who'll be joining us alongside Bobby Pat Petter uh, to talk about the semi-final as well. Um, and on Friday we're going to look at Hibs against Dundee United. So Scott Scottish Cup fever is in the air tonight and certainly um, when you consider Alec the uh, offer of a final is at stake everybody is eagerly looking forward to it the countdown is continuing I can just feel the tension now and it's been cranked up oh, without doubt I think uh, over the last couple of days it's really just to come to the fore Rangers have secured their uh, return to the top flight of football Scottish football and um, you can sense it in the street, Peter. You know, everyone's looking for tickets. The expectations are there. And both sets of fans are really looking forward to it. Yeah, and Phil, uh, the good thing about getting fans on to talk about these games, um, you can give it from a Celtic uh, perspective on this. Alec has <coughs> just mentioned tickets hard to come by. But what does it mean to fans finally getting back to not only this Scottish Cup semi-final against Rangers, but knowing there could be four fixtures next season? I think it's something that every football fan looks forward to. Um, fans of Celtic Rangers appreciate, I think, that it's the best derby in the world. And when you look at it in some of the great games that they've had in the past, it, it's something that just gets you excited as soon as somebody mentions it. Yeah. Have you missed the fixture? Definitely. Um, I think the fixture was something that, you know, you couldn't help but miss it because of the fact that it just generated so much excitement, so much discussion amongst the fans. And realistically, I think, even to this day with all the big derbies all around the world, when it comes back, it will still be the biggest. Yeah, it's good to get uh, Phil on, Ruffy, because he won a competition to come on. You obviously uh, equally so won a competition to come on the programme. <laughs> 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 Every night we'll be <clears throat> counting down to it. In a way, I feel kind of... Um, almost as if Dundee United against Hibs is almost like an afterthought for, yeah. for people, whereas, you know... There's, there's the same things at stake. Yeah, but it just shows you the magnitude of the Rangers Celtic through the history books. It's uh, as the guys have been saying, it's it's what we want. It's what every punter wants. The majority of Glasgow and the workplace want it. It gives you a bit of banter walking about. It gives you the the bragging rights. You know, you go into your mates on the Monday morning, and, and that's what we want. That's what supporters all thrive on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, Alec Ray knows exactly what it's like to win uh, an old firm fixture. Uh, there's going to be a few players on both sides that will be sampling it for the first time. Andy Halliday has been asking Ian Durant what it's all about. I've been trying to tap in for the knowledge of you know people like Ian Durant that are about the about the training ground and and how they dealt with the fixture going into it. And I've been trying to tap into as much knowledge as I can. I'm sure the other boys are doing the same. And but you know. Nothing can really comp uh, just sort of prepare you, prepare you for it. Sorry, you've just got to deal with it in your own manner. And you just try and shut off a little bit, and now the build-up's here. I mean, the draw was five or six weeks ago, whatever it is, and and you can't walk ten yards down the street without somebody asking you about the fixture. But we've had we've had a lot of goals to achieve before then. We've managed to do that. So now it's all guns blazing to go towards Sunday and, and go and enjoy the game, to get the result. Andy Halliday is one of those guys, Alec, that I think very much <coughs> um, fits into, you know, you as a boy being brought up a Rangers fan, getting a chance to play in that game, getting a chance to, to win honours with Rangers. He, you know, I mean, what advice would you give him <laughs> for, for a game of this magnitude and, and madness? You know, listen, he's got to keep his head. I think uh, all the players, are the, the thing is, there's such a crescendo building up to this, Peter, and it's how you control your emotions. We've seen it over the years where players uh, do silly things, they lose their rag. I've seen fights, I've seen three players at Ibrox way back with McAvery and Butcher and the likes and, you know, seasoned pros losing their head. So I think it's important and, uh, is to keep it in check. It, it's interesting hearing about Ian Durant there because Durant, he was kind of there at the same time as myself and uh, he was always saying it's about setting the tone. Make sure you win the first tackle uh, and put your stamp on the game early doors. There used to be an unwritten rule back then, you get 20 minutes of 
free for all. You can smash people all over the place. <laughs> but you know, I think they're a wee bit more uh, on your on your case earlier, and you've seen guys getting booked within a minute and things now. But um, but it's important to impose yourself on the game. Uh, I think if it's Celtic as well, they'll try and kind of intimidate Celtic uh, uh, Rangers. You know, they'll try and get in their faces and things uh, because of the style of play that Rangers have. And uh, it's going to be a really in intriguing uh, encounter. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and of course, this next uh, clip that we're going to hear from James Tavernier, I think he's one of the key players, <coughs> uh, Ruffy, in it. But he, he reckons that if he scores a goal, he he'll become an instant legend. You know, you, get, you hear a lot of people saying if you score against uh, Celtic, you become a, an instant legend. You know, I'm just my first and foremost thought is to uh, get, a, get a clean sheet and a really solid performance in, against them. And you know, if I get a goal, then you know it's a it's a massive bonus. But I'm just hoping that I can put a really good performance in for the team and uh, help us uh, get the win if we can. Yeah. Yeah, he's a player I like, Ruffy, but yeah. I, I'm dying to know who told him you can become an instant yeah. legend because it, it didn't happen for Paul Byrne or Tori Andrew yeah. Flo. Well, I was, I was going to say that. I, I, would just, I would just add a wee bit to that, that statement. It, it depends what goal he scores, you know, because if it's a winning goal, he will be a legend. If it's not, then it'll be another goal. That's, that's the way these games operate. And uh, so he'll be hoping it's the winning one. And yeah. uh, he will be a legend. Ruffy, you actually talk, touched on it. I think he's <coughs> one of the key players because yeah. there's the, 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 how Celtic going to line up. There was been talk about Kazi and Richards playing on that side on the left as a 4 3 3. Uh, but whoever plays on that side need to match both flanks, need to match Rangers fullbacks going that way and then try and get them going the other way to try and kind of get them in a defensive role because they're, they're clearly uh, modern day fullbacks who like to get forward. No, you know, defensively you're still saying to yourself, OK, did he uh, get back into shape early? Yeah. Uh, Phil, from a Celtic perspective, do you think the fans are looking at this and, and feeling there's a, an air of confidence about it? Um, and what's the perception of playing against this Rangers team, which is uh, so different from the one that uh, Celtic played, uh, you know, a couple of years back? I think the game a couple of years back was a bit of an anticlimax. I think even my friends who were Rangers fans understood that it was very unlikely that Rangers would win that game. But this time, funnily enough, I watched Rangers playing Dundee and I strangely enough bet Dundee to beat them because I thought they were a good bet. Um, in the first half, Rangers were magnificent. So that's the only thing you could say. And unfortunately, I watched Celtic the next day and they were awful. But I think in, in real terms, Celtic have got a better squad. Celtic are a better team. I fully expect Celtic to win the game, but I think it will be an exciting match. I think it will be pretty close. It will be <coughs> a lot closer than probably people think. Um, but when you look at the squads, I, I genuinely believe Celtic have real quality. And I think that's been enhanced this year by the likes of Tierney coming through. And when it really comes to it, I think the Celtic players have got to show their metal and have got to deliver. And I think particularly Scott Brown, this is you know time for him to stand up and be counted and really take the Celtic team forward and deliver what will be an expected victory. Uh, for the Celtic fans, obviously. Yeah, uh, Alec, with that in mind, you know, Phil mentioned there uh, Scott Brown. Um, uh, I think the battle with Scott Brown mm -hmm. and Andy Halliday is going to be interesting. I think yep. uh, Tavernier and what he can do going forward will be interesting. Yep. Um, what about the key mm -hmm. players? Uh, uh, also, Kenny Miller for his experience. What yep. about the key players in the Celtic side that you think, uh, over and above Scott Brown, that have to try and counter what Rangers are doing as well? Yeah, I, I, listen, I think it's about two defences, this, this, this encounter. How well they both... Uh, do on the day. I think there's been susceptible Rangers at the back at times. You haven't seen them in the Championship, and uh, but it's because of the style of play. You know, they're very free flowing. The, the full backs get forward, and they, obviously they're up against. For me, it was uh, the best player in Scotland in Lee Griffiths. So it'll kind of boil down to that as well. And, and you're interested. You mentioned Kenny Miller there. I think how Celtic. Uh, cope with Rangers rotation and then they obviously cope with the full backs going forward as well so there's a lot of kind of different permutations within this but one of the things you touched on a minute ago was it's a key battle is always the middle of the park it, invariably whoever wins that battle goes on and dominates the, the, the game yeah, um, <coughs> absolutely, Ruffy. I think that's that's the key. I mean, you, you can talk about goalkeepers, you can talk about flying fullbacks, but in the middle of the park, um, that's where I think the thunder yeah. will start. That's the first challenge that uh, is going in. I think that some said in previous Old Firm games, the first challenge is a free one, the second and third are a booking and a sending off. <laughs> yeah, well, Alex's right. You know, I think everybody will be looking at that first 50-50 with Scott Brown and Halliday, you mm -hmm. know, and it uh, be interesting to see who comes out the, the winner in that one. And then... Uh, I like to know it just lifts the whole everybody in the team everybody sees right their main man's getting in there 
and everybody's response. I think it's, it's all about the first goal. I think if Rangers get the first goal, their confidence will be so high, you know, they'll make it difficult for Celtic. And also, if it goes the opposite way, I think that's what will happen. OK, uh, thanks to uh, <coughs> Alec, Phil and Ruffy. Uh, second half on the way, we're going to talk hearts getting into European football. We're also going to talk about another uh, big match coming up for Alex and Mirren against Morton. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more football semi-final as well, Dundee United Hibs. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, our bookroom guest, is St Mirren manager and former Rangers player Alec Ray. And we also have uh, a guest fan in looking ahead to the eagerly anticipated uh, Old Firm showdown on Sunday in the Scottish Cup semi final. Phil McQuillan offering us his view from a fan's perspective on the big match. Uh, well, talking about the big match, you've got a big match of your own coming up. Uh, St Mirren against Morton. It's it's a derby in every sense of the word. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we went down there. I think it was one of my earlier games, and it was uh, blood and thunder. It was really uh, nip and tuck. But thankfully, we got over the line that day. You know, I, I think Morton hit the bar once or twice. So it was, it was a tough game, and hopefully, we can uh, get a positive result. You know, we wanted to kind of finish the season in a high. Yeah. Um, uh, how would you view the season as it reaches its climax? It's been a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually taken its toll. I'm, yeah, I'm at the stage now. I'm a bit knackered, and you know, the whole. Um, Magnitude of the job, really. You know, we were in it. Was um, we were thinking to ourselves, right? Okay, we need to get survival. But it's been a constant battle where, you know, Dumbarton and Livingston are winning, and it's just been uh, it's been really difficult. Um, it's been enjoyable, though. I must say, it's been the challenge has been great. Uh, I think the players have been great in terms of the results. have pitched in. They've been dogged. Uh, the disappointing thing for me in this is, looking at the flip side, which is relatively positive, is that we've lost uh, a late goal to Rangers in the 86th minute. A, a, a goal against uh, Hibs a couple of weeks ago in the last minute, and then obviously they're the losing goal to Falkirk at the weekend there. So that's your top three teams, and you know, so we're kind of running them close. So uh, it's been difficult to take, but you know, we've made some good strides in a short period of time. Yeah, uh, and the bigger job, I suppose, every manager is judged by his recruitment. Um, in the summer, is that going to be your real test? <laughs> I don't want to put pressure on you right away, but is that the real test? Yeah, well, listen, the, the, this is the thing. As everyone keeps saying to me, it's about building for next season and uh, we have to be realistic about that. I've identified targets, you know, over the course of this three or four months, which have been there, teams, players that maybe Queen of the South, Wraith, Morton, Falkirk. Uh, but unfortunately, we only secured uh, was, was mathematical safety at the weekend there. Yeah. So we couldn't go and recruit four, five, six, seven players until we actually knew where we were. So at, at this point, present time we're actually playing a little bit of catch up you know we've got a few targets a few things bubbling over uh, and I still have to let the current crop of players know who's coming who's going so uh, it's not, not an easy part of the job but we need to kind of get that uh, done and dusted sooner rather than later yeah okay um, <coughs> we'll talk to Phil more about the old firm game coming up and um, obviously predictions are on the way as well so stay tuned for that but um, uh, Ruffy uh, Dundee United against Hibs Hibs last night uh, had the chance to really uh, close the gap on Falker I think Peter Houston by far the happier manager with the 2-2 yeah you have to give uh, Falker all credit and that's twice they've came back for the death uh, particularly two goals in the last seven minutes uh, is incredible you yeah. would have thought Hibs would have learned uh, for their experience of losing late goals that somebody would have done something about it. But no, you're right. But uh, as Alan Stubbs said again, they've still got games, there's still points uh, to be won. I think Falkirk have the better goal difference, which might be a wee, uh, a wee worry for them. But uh, I think on the footballing side, when they were 2 nothing up, they'll go into the Dundee United game with a wee bit of confidence. Uh, the manner of the, the goals that they conceded last night and the one they conceded against Aloha tells me that if Mixu Patalainen was looking for any cracks uh, in the back line, he just launches the ball into the middle. Yeah, that, that's uh, unexpected for me. You know, I thought the boy McGregor uh, and Hanlon could have dealt with anything like that. I think they're quality centre-halves. It just seems to be a lack of concentration, which happens in every team, not just one team, but it's something they'll have to be aware of at uh, the weekend. Yeah, Alec, have you got uh, one that you think is favourite? Hibs still have two games in hand, so yeah. destiny is in their own hands, but um, do you have one or the other that you think is going to finish in second? Here's the table and how it looks now. Um, well, the one thing I'll say about Peter Houston's team is they, they have a momentum and a spirit at the moment. And we've seen that ourselves firsthand at, at Saturday when they scored in the 90th minute, which was a tough one, and having scored two goals last, last night. So it's interesting. I've seen, I've seen Falkirk about five months ago uh, prior to getting the Samarin job. And I, the one thing that struck me was the, the kind of 
team spirit within the place. They were kind of high-fiving each other, were kind of cajoling each other, and you thought, oof, they've definitely got something there. And that results in, in the, you know, the well season they're having at the moment. I think if you look at, I was at the Dumbarton game last night, so I've never seen the Hibs game, but if you read between the lines, Hibs done brilliant for 84 minutes. And then just had this kind of little kind of collapse. <coughs> and, and, and goals change games, Peter. You know, when they get the goal, all of a sudden Falkett's got that belief. Yeah. So, but I think going into the game, I think Hibs have the quality to still go up. I really do. I think they've got some good players. So Saturday's massive for them because they've got a bounce, you know, a reaction from the semi final. If they can get through that, they're now in the Scottish Cup and then they can focus wholly on trying to kind of secure a promotion. So, but I honestly couldn't see any certainty which, which one of the two is actually going to, going to go on. But, and saying that, Kamarnock's obviously got a, a really... If it's Kamarnock, they'll be looking to try and claw back Hamilton as well. Yeah, uh, and Ruffy, as far as <coughs> Dundee United are concerned, the most immediate uh, task for Mixed Paddling is to somehow lift the players to mm -hmm. get them over this hurdle and get into a final, which would be the only shining light of a season which has just been one catastrophe after another. Yeah, but obviously with the, the episode at the weekend with the boy gunning, you know, in the dress, <coughs> not going to help things either, you know. But as Alec will tell you, if you've got players at a football club and they have any ambition at all, you just put everything to the back burner. You know, it's a one game. You know, you believe in your ability, you believe in your teammates, and you go out there and you battle for a, not just yourself, but for the whole team. And that's what Dundee United will have to do. They'll have to put that kind of performance in. Yeah. Um, is it difficult when you get a situation like Gavin Gunnings is the most outrageous situation ever? Clearly, uh, Mixu is the man who's got to make the decision, and he's decided, yeah. you know, it, it, it's over for him. Well, there's, there's something underlying. I, I would have obviously gave the party a line that he, it was Mixu who's made that decision. Um, it's a bizarre one, um, but if Mixu feels as if that's the right decision for his team to try and get out of the predicament they're in at the moment and remove the boy, then obviously he has to do what's right for the team, but uh, clearly there's something not right there. Yeah, um, Hearts, European football, Ruffy. Um, third place secured a nil-nil against Inverness. I'm sure Robbie Nielsen would have uh, been desperate to get all three points in this one, but in the end, I mean, it's just fa it's mm -hmm. a fantastic season for Hearts. Everything off the field handled yeah. correctly, in my view. On the field, uh, they've come up trumps as well. Yeah, that's uh, where they were and where they are now. You know, I think we all we all remember about the. They carry on with the wages not being paid and all the, the stuff that the players were going through and, and where they are now is just fantastic and you have the full marks for everybody that's went into the club uh, as you've said there they've they've handled everything impeccably but the pleasing thing for me is the supporters you know supporters 15,000 there every fortnight and now they're going to be travelling about Europe with their side and I think that'll be the big plus for them. Yeah um, and again uh, the positive for the, the Premiership next season is Hearts are going to spend money. Aberdeen will surely spend uh, money. It, you know, it's just how much they're going to spend, but they're obviously going to offer a challenge. And, and Rangers, you know the expectation there, Alec. No, without doubt. You, and also, you've got a few more derbies coming into the equation as well. It just, uh, but the, the thing is, I think they actually need to add a bit, little bit more quality as well, I think, as I said. But I actually think by Rangers coming back in, people will be budgeting more as well, so there'll be more money coming back in. And uh, over the coming years, I think, with the old firm, You've got obviously got the if Dundee Dundee derbies there. You've got the Edinburgh derby, who's if, if Hibs come up. Uh, so you've got all these kind of permutations, and I think when you're going to go and try and sell the product, then it will benefit them, and which will result in more money getting filtered back into the game. Yeah, uh, uh, the key issue here, I think, Ruffy, before we get the predictions on uh, the semi-finals, um, the key issue I think is prudence, not. Mm -hmm overspending to try and chase a dream that might not be a reality. Yeah, and I think quite rightly, Paul Murray's already came out and sort of uh, tried to put a word out to the supporters, just just hang on there, we'll get there eventually, but we're not going to put ourselves into the mess where we're in. But in saying that, there still are quality players out there. I don't believe you need to go out and spend two or three million pounds. So with Mark Bortburn's contacts, I think they'll identify players that will be better than what they've got there now. Yeah. OK, then, give us your prediction, Alec. <coughs> um, I just wonder, I, I, I read a line today uh, from uh, Martin Waghorn saying that he's refusing to rule out a sensational return against Celtic. Um, I, I think that's a lovely red herring to throw up just before <laughs> yes. it. Um, how do you see it going? Oh. Um, I, I said it'd be 2-1 to Rangers last night, Peter, and uh, I'm going to stick with that prediction. OK. Um, Phil, um, if you um, side with Alec on that, I think most of your uh, mates will be absolutely gobsmacked and cashing out on their spread betting. How do you think? 
I think it'll be a great game, first of all. Um, it's going to be exciting, definitely be goals in it, no doubt about it. Defences um, are going to leak at some point. I think it'll be 3-2, but it'll be a very exciting game. By the way, and did you sense there was just a wee bit of tension oh, kicking in there, Ruffy? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, I went for, I think it was Celtic Monday night, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, change your mind. No, it was Rangers last night, so <laughs> I'm a draw. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Listen, uh, t- tomorrow uh, we'll have uh, Bobby Pett on, uh, we'll throw in um, Alan Ruff and we'll also have uh, a Rangers fan giving us their perspective on the build-up to the semi-final and on Friday we'll get Dundee United and him's view on it as well. Scottish Cup semi-finals, you can just feel the tension as it builds up. Thanks to the lads. Uh, join us tomorrow at 7 if you can. Thanks for watching. Good night.